Okay, so everyone, today we'll be doing section 14.3 on partial derivatives. Maybe get to section, we'll get to section 14.4 on tangent planes and tangent plane approximations. Maybe get to 14.5. The partial derivatives, we've already talked about how to get a partial derivative from equation check. And we also did a couple problems where we took the partial derivative from a table. We took a partial derivative of multivariable functions, like a function of x and y. Well, now, how about a three dimensional graph? So that's why I'm just going to hit the lights here so you can see this graph. We're going to talk about like it, fx or fy. Does everyone see there's the positive x-axis? So when we're talking about this, we're going to find the partial of f with respect to x at the point 1, negative 2. And the point 1, negative 2, I mean, that's point A, which is right here. So there's point A. So we're talking about is like, we got to think about the rate of change as of the function f as we move in the direction of the positive x-axis. That's what that means. But better than that, isn't it slope? So let's think of that. This will give, we gotta look at what's the slope, right, of the function at that point as you move in a direction of positive x-axis. So right here, as you move in the direction of the positive x-axis, is the values of f going down or are they going up? We just gotta tell whether it's positive or negative. What do you think? You can follow that little ruling right there if it helps. You can, put like a, you can even put like a line right there just to help you. Would the slope decrease or increase? Decrease. Would you go down? Think of this like you're, on, you're standing there on a hill. Would you go down or would you go up? If you move in the direction of the positive x-axis. You'd be going down, right? And so the answer to letter A there, we just got to tell about determine the sign of the partial derivative. Letter A, we can say fx negative 1, 2 is negative fx, 1, negative 2 is, I'll just put a minus sign. Now, uh, what about letter B? We've got to find fy at 1, negative 2. We've got to find the slope of f in which direction? That would be in the direction of the positive y-axis, which is here. So go to that same point, everyone. Can you imagine if you're on this hill here and you can move in the direction of this positive y-axis, are you going up or down? going down. The values of f are decreasing, so we're saying that it would be negative as well. Is that going to go with that? If you got it down, it's just, what about this? So you got xx. So that's second derivative. So now you got to think concavity, right? we got to think, what's going on as I move in the direction of the positive x-axis? What's going on with the slope of f? Oh, well, let me just hit that mouse. What's going on with the slope of the function in the direction of the positive x as we move in that direction? Well, that's concavity. So I'll just hit this real quick. This is when a function's concave up, right? Like a cup, and this is concave down. And in which one of these, if these are representing some function in calculus one in two-dimensional space, in which one is second derivative always positive? This one, right? And the second derivative is always negative when it's concave down. I'm going to definition of this. We're saying that the slope of f always increases along this interval. So concave up, we think of like a cup. Okay. The definition of concave down is oh, along that interval. The slope of f, the first derivative of f is always decreasing. I mean, if you want to see an example, look. Let's say the slope right there is what? 3, and the slope right there is 1, and the slope right there is 0, and the slope right there is negative 1. But concave down, we're saying, aren't these slope values always decreasing? One an interval? Good. So that's what we're looking at here. you got to look at this. you got to think like this in these images. So let's go to this point again, 1, negative 2. And we're talking about what's the slope of f as we move in the direction of positive x. Not the values of f as before, but the slopes. So we're just looking to see is it concave down or concave up as you move in the direction of positive x-axis. So you'd be going along this little ruling right here, true? As you move in the direction of positive x-axis, we use those rulings to help us see as we're moving that way, because it is everyone, it is a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional screen, but is that concave down or concave up? Concave down. 
which means second derivative would be what? Negative. So that's uh, letter C, right? I'm going to write f x x 1, negative 2 would be negative, which means f is concave down. Does everyone see how I'm using this? I think line is concave down there. Now, one more. One more for this problem. How about f y y? So we're like, okay. Slopes. What's going on with the slopes? Are they increasing and decreasing as you move in the direction of positive y axis? So as you go along that ruling, is that concave up or concave down? Can you see it's like this? It's concave up, isn't it? Does anyone agree it's like a cup? So that would be positive. Ooh, is that okay with this? Can anyone see that it's kind of, sometimes students have a hard time just to go, I don't know where to look. You can use those rulings to help you see if you're moving in the direction of the positive y-axis. You're like, Okay, I'm coming this way. There's the positive y-axis. That's why I headed along this one. But can you see it's concave up in the image? And before it was concave down. There you go. And I put an extra practice problem in if you wanted to practice that one as well. Awesome. Hey, uh, I'm going to lower this now. Great job with that. Everyone's okay with that? Awesome. What about partial derivatives? We did equations, we did tables, we just saw a three-dimensional graph. What about contour curves? So let's just, we can do letter A. Letter A says, can you, and I'm right, all we can do is estimate this value. We don't have an equation, so the best we can do is estimate. Can you estimate fx at the point 2, 1? The first partial root of f is back to x. All right, so let's locate the point. I put a dot on there to help you out. Does anyone see the point right there? So how do we do this? This is just like a table. If I'm going to estimate this, I don't have an equation. And this is basically change in f values over the change in the x values. That's how we can estimate it. And at that point, 2, 1, I'm going to use the closest contour values I've got. I mean, those are f values. Pretend these are temperatures in Celsius. It's like, oh, it's 8 degrees Celsius here, it's 10 degrees Celsius here, it's 12 degrees Celsius there. And we're going to find fx at 2, 1. So, let's see. What's the closest contours I can use? Well, at 2, 1, I can use the 10 and the 8, right? Does that work? So I can do 10 minus 8, but you've got to tell me what's the corresponding x values. And remember, we're just estimating, so ballpark will work. Give me a ballpark value here. At x equal to, is that x equal to 2 right there? This is a f value of 10. What would be the corresponding x value right there at 8? Will 1.2 work? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Change it out. 10 minus 8, I got to stay consistent. What was corresponding with the 10? About a 2. And I said 1.2. Will that work for everyone? Again, I'm estimating. I'm estimating this. It's the best I can do, and I'm looking at this image here, and I'm estimating right there at the 8, because I had to say, what's the direction fx? Now, you could have done 8 minus 10, but I did 10 minus 8 over 2 minus this, and what did we get for the estimate? 2 over, what is that, 0. 0.8? All right, what's 2 over 8 tenths? Or what's 2 times 10 eighths? <laughs> 20 over 8 or 10 over 4. What says the decimal? Is that 2.5? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like everyone, if these were temperatures, what could I say? Think about it. If I moved in this direction, aren't the temperatures increasing? Change in F over change in X. It looks like. You know, it would be like, uh, it looks like it's increasing about 2.5 degrees Celsius per increase of x value on this table here. If those were temperatures. These were just likely made up numbers that I got because I got that image from the textbook. Does that make sense that? Can you do an FY in a similar manner? Um, this time, I don't need you to estimate FY, like here, in terms of the value, but could you just tell me would it be positive or negative? That's most important to me. Everyone, we can tell that fx would be positive because these are increasing, right? As you go in this direction. What about 
partial derivative of f with respect to y. That right there. So if you move in this direction to that point, are the values of f increasing or decreasing? Decrease. So fy to 1, I mean, you could estimate it, but we definitely know that the answer would be negative. I just want to highlight that. Sure, you can make an estimate just like we just did, but do you all agree you will get a negative answer? There you go. Rate of, rate of change. Rate of change at f in the direction of the positive y axis. Cool? Hey, uh, one more with these conduits. Then we can go back to some equations. Now let's go to this image right here. All we got to do is talk about the signs. All we have to do is talk about the signs. So you're going to fly through letter A and letter B. But then you and I will stop and maybe you'll think about this again to help us understand C and D. Letter A, I just need positive or negative. This is at point P. So if, there's the positive x-axis. If you move in that direction, are the values of, uh, these are all the f values. You move in that direction right there, I'll just take a nice vert, horizontal line going through P. Are the values of f increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So fx is positive. How about fy? This is at point P. You go through here, the pot f values of f increase or decrease? Decrease. And it's that simple. Not bad, huh? Just ready to change. Well, they're decreasing. Okay, fxx. How do we do this with contours? I want to point out, everyone, when these contours are really tight, that means it's really steep. And if you can think of this as like, pretend that this is representing some terrain. When it's really tight, we're talking about something that's really, really steep, but if the contours are spread apart, all right, that's not so steep. To help you out, it's like this. Let's say there's a, see the numbers two, four, six, eight? Say there's a two right here and a four right here. These are spread out, right? Attach a road between these two points. Wouldn't that be a nice, nice, nice ride right there? It's not so steep. But what happens when you have a two here and then there's a four right next to it when the contours are really close to each other, like the six, eight? So six, eight. Put a road between my two hands. That would be extremely what? Steep. So the whole idea is, okay, it's really steep when it's you got the contours tight, close together. Um, it's not so steep when they're spread apart. So when I'm going to go for this fxx, all right, what's going on with the slope of f when I move in the direction of the positive x? The slope, okay. So I'm going to go in this direction. Everyone, it looks like, okay, it was not so steep. And then in terms of slope, it was more steep. So it went from not so steep positive to more steep positive. Do you all agree fxx would be positive? And sometimes i got to do that twice. I know it's not so simple. You go, what am I looking at? I'm actually looking at how far apart these contours are on either side of the point P as I move in that direction. So on this side, they were more spread out. On this side, it seemed like they were closer together. So it's like, okay, it was like not so steep positive slope. And then it was a steeper positive slope. That means the slopes did what? Increased. Do you all agree? Now, if you're wondering what, what it would look like three-dimensionally, it's like, it looks like it was like this. It was a positive slope, but it was not so steep. Then it was more steep and positive, so it would be concave up, if that helps. This is what's going on here. It was like, okay, it was not so steep, positive. But then it went to something like this, where it was really, really steep. Some people like to think that way. All right, one more. F, Y, Y. Remember, look at how far apart these contours are on this side. All right? Do you agree on this side? If you write a P, it looks like these are close together than on this side. All right, so it looks like really, really close together, really steep. So I'll say large. For steep, can I say large slope? And for not so steep, I'll, I'll say small slope. Okay, large slope, smaller slope. But I'm going to add one more word. Look carefully. What was FY before? 
so be careful with this, especially on a test. So this is what I would say to myself. It went from a large negative slope, then to a smaller negative slope. Think mathematically what happened with those numbers. Just make up numbers. What would go from, it went from a large negative slope, and then it changed to, as I went to be in the direction of the positive y-axis, to a smaller negative slope. What happened with those numbers? Okay, I'll make up some numbers. This was like negative 4 and this was like negative 2. Did these numbers decrease or increase? increase. Do you notice these increase? So FYY is positive. That sometimes gets students. They go, why is that positive? I'll say it again. Because of the negative values. How FY was negative. So I gotta think large negative slope, and then it changed to a smaller negative slope. And it's still going to be concave up. So do you want to see where that is? Oh, I use a shell of chalk right here. I'm going to be right here. Large, negative, slope, and then went to about here, which would have been a not so large, but still negative slope. <laughs> Smaller negative slope. I don't care that. Hey, great. I always get a lot of questions on this stuff, but it's not so bad. So, hey, you got it. I'll turn it off. You got con contour curves, three dimensional graphs, table equations. Um, I have some practice problems. You know, you, you look in a textbook, you don't get much practice on that problem. So, I do want to point out, I'll, I'll just grab another one of these. Here it is. I just I made up this worksheet, and I'll just scroll way right down here. And look at that. If you want extra practice, the answers to this worksheet are given to you. Where I just I knew you want, might want some questions on this. So look at all the points I made up. I was like, can you find fxx here and fx there and fx and just tell me if it's positive or negative. 